This week is National HIV Testing Week here in the UK. If you're unsure or concerned about your HIV status or if you may have been at risk or engaged in potentially risky sex and you haven't been tested, now's the time. While you're watching or listening to this video, if you visit www.freetesting.hiv, you can order a free home test kit now. So yesterday I posted this picture on Instagram and I asked you a question. I asked you how you thought I got HIV and I gave you four possible answers. The top three, which you can see here, are all potential ways in which HIV can be transmitted. And the bottom option is a bit of a wild card. Um, so by touching used cutlery can in no way ever transmit HIV. And the reason I included this is because when I first got diagnosed, um, this was one of my thoughts. This is when I was looking for answers, looking for reasons. Now the reason I asked this question yesterday is because I'm going to use your answers in this video today. So here's the results. None of you thought that I got HIV from sharing a needle. 5% of you thought that I got it from touching used cutlery. 17% of you thought that I got HIV from a blood transfusion. And the majority of you, the a massive 78%, thought I got it from unprotected sex. Let's compare these numbers with UK statistics. Public Health England records, amongst a lot of other things, the numbers of people in England living with HIV, new HIV transmissions, and it also estimates on the people, or the number of people who don't know they have it. These figures all come from 2019, and it covers all of those who accessed HIV care in the UK. Out of those people, 1.9% contracted HIV from injecting drugs or sharing needles. 2% of those were from vertical transmissions, which is from mother to baby or from breastfeeding. 2.7% of people, the reasons unknown. 46.1% is from heterosexual sex. And finally, 46.8% is from sex between men. The latest data from 2019 estimates that around 105,000 people are living with HIV in the UK. And it's estimated that 6,600 don't know they have it. In 2019, 4,139 people tested positive, and that's people from all genders, all sexualities, and all ethnicities. It's not just gay men. When I was diagnosed in 2011, I was one of the 6,220 newly diagnosed people in the UK. So it's, it's really good to see that the rates are steadily declining. But we can do more. You know, even just one new transmission is too many. So only by coming into contact with certain bodily fluids can you be at risk of contracting HIV. For example, blood, semen, vaginal and anal fluids and breast milk. And HIV can be transmitted through unprotected sex, sharing needles, from mother to baby, breastfeeding, and on occasion from contaminated blood transfusion, but that's pretty rare now. Now all of these are only risky when it's a HIV positive individual that has a detectable viral load or that isn't being treated. HIV doesn't survive long outside of the body and it can't be transmitted through saliva, urine or sweat. Those of you who answered unprotected sex to my question were correct. I got HIV from unprotected sex when I was 24. I had come out a few months earlier and I was on a holiday in Brighton. I was exploring my sexuality. This was the first time in my life ever that I'd been having sex with men. I was excited and curious and I was enjoying this newfound freedom from my in the closet self. But I was pretty naive and I was uneducated about HIV and STDs in general. This one night, under the influence of alcohol, I brought a guy back from the club. Neither of us had condoms, but we, we had the conversation that I never had unprotected sex before. He told me that he was clean. Now I've digressed from this story for just a second. I hate 
the use of the words clean and unclean when talking about HIV positive people. That's just another form of stigma. In fact, you'll probably find that most people living with HIV are more clean due to regular testing and self-care self around STDs. So ultimately, I put my trust in a complete stranger. And that was it. We had unprotected sex one night. I never saw this guy again. I didn't have his contact details. And I didn't have unprotected sex again. November came and I was diagnosed. I thought through different things in my head. Again, going back to that old cutlery thing, weirdly. But I knew there was only one possible cause, and it was the first time I'd had unprotected sex. This was maybe the third or fourth guy that I had sex with, and this was the first time that I, I'd had unprotected sex, and I contracted HIV from this one time. And this has really shown to me just how virulent this virus is, and just how easily it can spread. It was devastating to find out that I had HIV. I knew so little about it apart from the fact it was a killer. You know, when I got diagnosed, it put a huge strain on my mental health. I really struggled, I contemplated suicide, and I felt in a way that I deserved it. I felt so much shame, shame about being gay, shame about having unprotected sex that one time, and I had just an overwhelming shame about, about being HIV positive. It was only through educating myself talking to doctors and medical professionals and talking to friends that I began to understand the reality, the truth, and eventually come to terms with and you know, now I accept my HIV status. I live a healthy, happy life and I have you know what you call normal life expectancy, that's normal in comparison to those people who are HIV negative. This is all thanks to the treatment and regular tests. I'm now completely in control of, control of my own sexual health. Many people have said before me this statement, but it's, it's so true. I thrive with HIV. The thing is, you can so easily protect yourself and help stop the spread of HIV with regular testing, using condoms, taking PEP or PrEP, but it's only by taking these simple steps that we can slow and eventually stop new HIV transmissions and we can beat down the stigma surrounding it. The UK and other countries around the world have all committed to ending new HIV transmissions by 2030. But we can all start now. While we're all locked down at home, we're not really seeing people, we're not going out having sex with people, we're not bringing guys back from the club and having sex with them. We can really make an impact now. If you have been at risk or if you feel you may be at risk, if you are worried, concerned, just go and order a free test, a free home test kit now. Again, the website is freetesting.hiv or you can book in with your local sexual health clinic. Um, I've linked to some useful websites and resources in the description below which will help you find a free test or will help you find your local sexual health service. Um, and that's, that's it. Until next time, take care of yourselves and stay safe.